Hello, this is the first of four videos on the topic of the Universal House of Justice and the guardianship. Uh, it comes from an old manuscript of mine, the Universal House of Justice and the Baha'i World, 1963-1973. As with the other videos in this series, the main reference is the book Messages from the Universal House of Justice, 1963-1986. Uh, which uh, you can look at uh, if you want to read the proper texts uh, that I'm referring to. Uh, also uh, of possible interest is an old article I wrote together with Mujan Woman on the Baha'i Faith 1957-1988, which provides a sort of contextual overview of the period. The question of the guardianship was of evident immediate concern to the newly formed Universal House of Justice in 1963, requiring both a prayerful and careful study of the relevant Baha'i texts and prolonged consideration of the views of the hands in Haifa. The key decision was announced on the 6th of October, 63, the House stating that it had found no way in which a second guardian to succeed Joki Friendly could be appointed. Neither was it possible for them to legislate to make such an appointment. The line of guardians projected in Abdul Baha's will and testament had evidently come to an end, and the Universal House of Justice would have to leave the Baha'i world alone. As Shukri Vendi himself had observed, the institutions of the House of Justice and the guardianship were twin institutions appointed by Baha'u'llah and Abdul Baha to be their successors, destined to apply the principles of the faith, promulgate its laws, protect its institutions, adapt it loyally and intelligently to the requirements of progressive society, and consummate the incorruptible inheritance which its founders had bequeathed to the world. In this context, uh, the House of Justice is ruling that it could not legislate for the appointment of any further guardians was profoundly significant. The House uh, commented briefly on this situation in a message which it addressed to all Baha'is in October 1963. Faced with the reality of there being no further guardians, the House had begun to undertake, quote, the heavy task, tasks laid upon it, and in accordance with Shukla Friendly's own words, guide, organise and unify the affairs of the Baha'i movement throughout the world, considering afresh the situation as necessary and laying down the principles to direct the affairs of the cause as it deemed advisable. The Baha'i should be assured the covenant of Baha'u'llah remained unbroken and its all-encompassing power remained inviolate. The two unique features which distinguished it from all previous religious covenants still operated and were unchanged, namely, first, that the revealed word in its original purity and as amplified by the divinely guided interpretations of Abdul Bahan Shafi Effendi remained immutable, unadulterated by any man made creeds or dogmas, unwarrantable inferences or unauthorized interpretations. And secondly, that the channel of divine guidance remained open via the Universal House of Justice, an institution founded by Baha'u'llah himself and endowed by him with supreme authority and unfailing guidance and able to provide flexibility in the direction of human affairs. In the words of Abdul Baha, all things had to be referred to the house. Again, as Baha'u'llah had asserted, the Baha'i revelation had been established upon an unassailable and enduring foundation. The storms of human strife were powerless to undermine its basis, nor would the fanciful theories of men succeed in damaging its structure. For the house, an implicit example of the divine protection of the Baha'i cause was also offered in a consideration of the period following the death of Shafi Effendi in 1957. It had been a time of anguish as the Baha'i world found itself deprived of the guiding hand of its guardian. But rather than paralyzing the growth of the faith, that anguish had stiffened the Baha'i's resolve and fired them with zeal to complete the tasks which God had laid upon them. The then recently formed institution of the hands of the cause had kept the Baha'is faithfully on to the path which had been shown to us by the pen of divine guidance.
Commission and brought them both to the successful conclusion of Shelby Appendix's Tenure Crusade and the establishment of the Universal House of Justice, um, that being the culminating point of the construction of the framework of Baha'u'llah's World Order, both those events taking place in 1963. Yet uh, two facts remain to trouble the thinking of many Baha'is. First, Abdul Baha had referred to a line of guardians, but the line had earned it abruptly with the very first incumbent, and to the Universal House of Justice and the guardianship had been envisaged as twin institutions which would function together in a complementary manner. Various questions followed, including worries about the rights, or the right, I should say, of the hands of the cause to call for the election of the House, uh, and about the ability of the House to function on its own without the guidance of a guardian. Responding to such uncertainties, the House of Justice composed three major letters on the issues involved. The first on the 9th of March 1965, the second on the 27th of March 1966, and the third on the 7th of December 1969. For those who want to read the original texts, I refer you to uh, the sections 23, 35 and 75 in the book Messages um, from the House of Justice. So thank you for listening and particular thanks to my patrons for their kind support and encouragement. Without them I wouldn't be able to make these videos. Please do like, comment and share on the videos, it really does help. Subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos. I'll give a Patreon link below if you want to provide practical support. Next week we'll move on to the second part of this, the, the first of those three letters I mentioned, uh, the Universal House of Justice and the Guardianship. Have a good day.